Chairs No Waiting, episode number 582, Court Howell. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you by the fine folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weaver's and check out some of the great Mayberry items they got over there, like the Mayberry's Finest Coffee and Bacon. Go and check that out. And you also check out Aunt B's Mayberry Cookbook. This is the 60th anniversary edition. So many things over there, T-shirts, all kinds of stuff. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of episode number 582 are Susan and Wynn Arnold. So Susan and Wynn, thank you for supporting the show and thank you for being here with me. It's always fun to spend some time in Mayberry each week and i appreciate you coming along for the ride we're going to be hearing from court howell it's a fairly long interview so i'm going to try to get into it pretty quick here court howell is the son of hoke howell who played dud walsh now you remember dud as charlene's husband uh you know he is con- he is trained in guerrilla warfare where you take his arm and reach over and grab his ear and pull it you remember that you want your face to freeze that away you know Anyway, he was honorably discharged and came back as a private first class. Remember, Dud? Uh, yeah, he had all that stuff, uh, Charlene's letters, her hair ribbon, and uh, the remainders of that mountain gladiola <laughs> that she had given him when he left. Yeah, it just proved that he was the sweetest boy that ever growed. You remember that? So that was Court's dad, Hoke. Uh, and I got to meet him a couple of times. Uh, great, great guy. So nice. Now, Court is one of the producers of the upcoming Mayberry Man movie, and uh, some some people have been asking and wanting some updates about what's going on with that, because I talked about it in the podcast, I don't know, several months ago, and people have been wondering. So, Court is one of the producers, along with uh, Greg, uh, Greg Schell and Stark Howell, his brother, uh, who is also the writer and director. So we, it's all in the family. It's all in the Mayberry family here. So we're going to hear about some of that. And if you're not super interested in that for some reason, uh, that's fine. Stick around, though, because Randy Turner's got a great report on Rodney Dillard. So, folks, we're going to head on right now to hear from Court. And uh, this was recorded as a Zoom interview, our second one. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. So, Court and Alan, take it away. All right. Hey, Court, it's good to have you here with us on the podcast. Good to be here. Yeah, so um, we've been talking a little bit before we got started here. Uh, Court, uh, you were too young when your dad was doing the show to even remember it, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you you hear Clint Howard talk about how he doesn't even remember being on the show. Well, I wasn't even born, so that makes it impossible to remember being around. But, um, you know, growing up around that atmosphere and, you know, our family was you know, in addition to my dad being on the show, you know, he was best friends with Rance Howard and my older brothers piled around with Ron and Clint. And so it was always kind of around. So I kind of felt like I was there, even though I wasn't. And I was around for, you know, on other productions and things like that. So, you know, attending the, you know, happy days when my dad appeared on happy days, you know, and uh, Grand Theft Auto, that Ron's directorial debut was kind of a fun experience so yeah i was around it well i remember the first time i I actually met you through the podcast really uh you contacted me at some point and i was going to be up in indiana at mayberry in the midwest i got to meet you there i believe was the first time we met yeah yeah and uh that was a uh, that was a lot of fun i'm glad i finally got to meet you in person because uh you know we had uh, you know for me anytime anybody that's even kind of collect connected to the show your dad was on the show so when you were when you actually, I found out you're watching the podcast. I was excited. <laughs> well, I found uh, I found the podcast because every once in a while, I'll just Google my dad's name and see what comes up. And you had uh, done an episode of the Two Chairs No Waiting with um, the interview that he did at one of the events with him and Maggie Peterson on the porch of some house, and I think it was in Ohio or something. Oh, yeah. And so that's how I discovered the podcast, and I started listening. And you know, you're you're. Your, your velvety voice uh, just sucked me in and I became a regular listener. <laughs> that could be the first time I ever uh, got that comment. I, I will save that clip to use later. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was uh, up at the Mayberry Squad Car Rendezvous up in Bradford, Ohio is where that was. Uh, that was the first time 
that was the first time I met your dad was there. And uh, that was, that was a lot of, that was a lot of fun because there's actually a couple got married during that event. Right. And your dad actually participated during the actual wedding. Yep, I've seen those pictures. <laughs> I think I've seen some video from that too. Yeah, he we, really enjoyed it. When he discovered this was going on, um, you know, he loved going to those events and, and hanging out with the fans. And, you know, you could tell he would, he would prepare as well, right? He would show up knowing his lines from the show and have stories to tell. And, uh, yeah, he had a blast. Yeah. Well, the fans loved him too, because he, he, he did remember and know things from the show. So it was really fun to have him participate with us. And he and Maggie uh, Peterson, Charlene, you know, they were together uh, at, at most of the events that they were, they both were there. So that was always fun to see uh, Charlene and Dud together. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, w we really appreciated him being part of it. And, uh, and it's nice to see, cast members that I don't think they always know what to think. And I, it may be the same with you is when you attend an event with these Mayberry people, what was your expectation the first time you attended an event like that? Were you a little nervous about it or? No, not, not really. I mean, I, I think the Mayberry days or excuse me, the Mayberry in the Midwest and Danville is, it's sort of like the training wheels version before you actually go to Mayberry days in Mount Airy, where it's a little more intense. Uh, so I got to kind of tiptoe into the, uh, into the atmosphere, but um, you know, it's just a blast. You know, people appreciate my connection to the show and um, you know, it's good people. So, you know, what, what, what can go wrong? Yeah. There are some really amazing people. I know some of the cast members over the years have, uh, you can always kind of tell the first time they are at an event, uh, since I do Floyd, I get to see them and uh, talking with them. And the first time they do an event like that, they're not quite sure what this <laughs> is going to be like. You know, they've seen Star Trek conventions on TV or right. whatever, and they're not quite sure. And then the Mayberry people in general tend to be just kind of a little bit more laid back and just uh, are so happy to meet or see or get an autograph from any yeah. of the cast members or even the kids of the cast members uh, we enjoy getting to meet all of you guys. So, we well, my first, you know, I did have an advantage, uh, back when I did a, my first independent feature film and I called up, uh, Clint and, and Rance was around and I, you know, begged them to do little cameo roles in the film. And it was kind of a suspense thriller or horror film. And so we debuted it at a horror convention in Texas where, Clint was scheduled to be there to do autograph signings. And so that was really my first experience, you know, one of those Comic-Con type, type of uh, experiences. And uh, that was eye-opening. So that was really, after that experience, you know, Mayberry Days and Mayberry in the Midwest was pretty mild. <laughs> but, um, but we were kind of promoting our film and, and uh, Clint, we actually had a booth and set up right next to Clint. So I kind of got to see Clint doing the autograph signing in action. And then we did another convention where uh, it was a much bigger convention. Uh, I think it was in Philadelphia. And um, it was like right before Ernest Borgnine passed away, you know, he was at that convention and I think they had like all the Captain Kirks, you know, from Shatner on down. Um, and they just had a lot. I remember um, Lou Ferrigno was there. And uh, he's such a serious guy. Like it was like the first day of the festival and a lot of the celebrities aren't there, but he was there at his booth, ready to sign autographs, do whatever. <laughs> so you kind of get to know the personalities of some of these actors and you kind of, some of them are just really down to earth folks. And you know, others are uh, Captain Kirk. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I've been to uh, the Hollywood collector show out in, uh, California. I've been to that and there were, it's just a room full of people that are from TV, movies, whatever, signing autographs for people. Yeah. And, and I just remember that experience was, was interesting for me from just a fan's point of view. Uh, you know, I've, I've always kind of wonder what some of the, the, some of the actors and stuff, I wonder, I always wonder how they really how they really take all these, all these people, uh, especially if you're William Shatner, you're talking about Captain Kirk, 
you know, people <laughs> dress up like him all the time. And so I, that's got to be, I mean, for 50 years plus, he's been dealing with that. I don't know how many of the Mayberry uh, cast members had to deal too much with most of people like me that dress up like Floyd the Barber. They didn't have to deal that often with them. I know uh, that uh, Howard Morris, Hearst T, he, <laughs> he gave anybody down the road that was trying to dress up like uh, like Ernest T. Bass. So he didn't <laughs> he didn't really like that. So, uh, well, but, and it's hard too for the actors because uh, you know the people that are fans of the shows they like really know the shows inside and out, right? And actors they move on, they've got other projects, and uh, they're like, "What? Huh?" <laughs> right. Well, that's the reason I always thought it was interesting. Your dad obviously he had. He'd either rewatch the episodes or something because when he was at events, he he could answer most every question that was asked for. Because he was only on a few episodes, so he didn't have to right. remember uh, 249 episodes of everything that happened on everything. Right. Well, there's it's funny because um, I've been going back through the shows a little bit, and we'll talk about this in a moment when we talk about our Mayberry Man behind the scenes uh, project. But I uh, was looking at the music or listening to the music and comparing some of these themes from season one and they, they're still showing up, you know, beyond the whistle theme, but they still show up in the color episodes. And so we're going to put together a little, uh, you know, behind the scenes look at how, how we're going to use music in the movie, the Mayberry Man movie. And, um, you know, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, this, there's a lot, they cover a lot of ground there and there's a, uh, if you're in, you know, 240 some odd episodes, how are you going to remember? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they do it either. And and it's unfair because the fans, we watch the episodes over and over and over. And as you said, the, the actors in general, that was a job. Uh, you know, I can't remember everything I did at my day job for the last 10 years. So... <laughs> I can understand the actors also move on to that. Well, you were mentioning about Mayberry Man, the movie. Now you and uh, go ahead and talk about that. You and your brother. and Sure. So, I mean, Stark went to his first uh, Mayberry Festival and I think he went with kind of the idea that maybe there's an opportunity to do sort of an independent feature film inspired by this fan community and, and all that. Um, you know, he was already buddies with Greg Shell. Uh, they were surfing buddies and Greg said, you got to come to one of these things. And so Stark went a couple of years back and uh, was inspired to uh, go ahead and pursue that and create a feature film. It's called Mayberry Man. And it's, uh, it's nothing too amazingly groundbreaking. In fact, it kind of follows the pilot episode from the Danny Thomas show, right? It's, it's this hotshot Hollywood guy who uh, gets busted for speeding in a small town and then is sentenced to a week in uh, at the Mayberry Festival, uh, and it's, and so now he's kind of, it's kind of a fish out of water, and now you got this guy who's stuck in this kind of crazy world. It's mo present day, modern day, but it's uh, you know all these people that dress up as characters from the Andy Griffiths show and all that, and they ha and the fans that show up at this festival don't know who he is because he's like one of these modern celebrities, right? And um, so it's just a good family film. It'll be G-rated. It. Uh, a lot of things in, in line or in, in, the, in the vein of the Andy Griffith show. You know, we're not remaking the Andy Griffith show. That would be disastrous. Um, but a lot of tributes to the show, little, you know, as they say, Easter eggs, little, you know, little things that we're going to put in the movie that, that uh, you know, like you'll recognize that we pulled right from the Andy Griffith show. And, um, you know, obviously the themes and everything about family and friendship and community and, uh, you know, kind of a redemptive storyline. And uh, it's going to be good. And then the, the fact that we're doing it as sort of a crowdfunded, self-funded project, you know, we're able to involve the fans and, uh, you know, the tribute artists and try to get as many tribute artists in as we can. And, um, you know, we'll have some professional actors to carry the load of the acting, but uh, fans of you know, been able to contribute and get speaking parts, be extras, things like that. And so we're in the process. We've been doing some casting, uh, trying to, you know, get our backers, you know, cast properly in roles where, you know, it's not going to detract from the movie, right? You know, acting is not easy. It look, it's a lot easier. It's a lot harder than it looks. 
And so we want to set up everyone for success and obviously have a, a professionally produced film, even though we're making it for pennies on the dollar. You know, with our experience and our, uh, all the contributions as far as locations and the, like, you know, we're going to be shooting this in Danville, Indiana, where they do the Mayberry and the Midwest Festival. So we have a lot of cooperation from that town. And then also we have cooperation in Mount Airy and the surrounding areas um, by getting outside of, you know, Hollywood. Um, you have a lot more flexibility and, you know, people want to pitch in and help out. And so that'll save us a lot of expense. We'll get a lot of production value, uh, a lot of bang for the buck. So yeah, Free labor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not some free labor, yeah. Well, we still have to hire a lot of technicians, right? And even, I mean, we've been going over the budget, and uh, you know, you got to find people that are passionate about the project because it's basically minimum wage. <laughs> and um, and the same thing with the actors, you know, in order to use some of the celebrities, the stars, and our our lead character, which I want to touch on, uh, you know, they're SAG actors, so we have to do this with a SAG contract, Screen Actors Guild contract. And fortunately, they have something called the ultra low budget. We're not even low budget, Alan. We're ultra low budget. <laughs> and, uh, but fortunately, uh, you know, it has a reduced uh, rate for the actors, but you have pension, welfare, you have payroll taxes, you've got different, various requirements. And when we're traveling them out of town, you got to pay travel day. You know, it just adds up real quick. Um, but, you know, the people that we're working with, they're not doing it for the money. They, uh, but they do have to abide by the contract because they're SAG, SAG actors. You know, so you're Clint Howard, you're Ronnie Shells. And our lead character, I don't think we've even announced this anywhere yet. Um, so the lead role, the movie star, uh, the guy we're casting in that role is named Richard Gunn. And he's, a, he's, he's perfect for the role. You know, we're thrilled to have him. But how we found him is uh, his mother is Laura Hagen, and oh, wow. who is the you know the was married to Earl Hagen, who did all the music for the Andy Griffith Show, and so Stark was actually talking to her about the music, and she's going to allow us to use the music for free, which is a huge thing, and we'll talk about that later. But um, and she's like, well, I don't want to sound like a mom, but uh, <laughs> my son's an actor. Maybe you could take a look. And then when Stark did, he's like, wait, this guy's a real actor <laughs> and he's right for the part. And so he and Stark, we did some auditions and you know, had him read or whatever just to make sure it's a good fit. And Richard was on board with it and wants to do it as, you know, kind of help keep uh, Earl's legacy alive. And so it's kept it in the family. So we're excited about great. that. That is great. Yeah, I didn't know that either. That is really, that's a great connection. It's yeah. just fun to hear those kind of things. Yeah. And we, well, and we were talking to, to Laura the other day, and I don't know if I have my note around here, but it turns out uh, one of her family members did an Ancestry.com thing, and she's actually related to Andy Griffith. Really? <laughs> like wow. a 16th cousin or something. Uh, yeah, way. Okay, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We're all Maybe related. We all be. I don't know. We <laughs> right? <laughs> Wow. But anyway, that was fun. So we're excited about having him involved and he's, uh, you know, he's on board with the project and uh, you'll get to know him really well because you're starring in this movie. Yeah, Floyd is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be great. Uh, you know, that's, uh, it's always fun, like I said, to hear that there's uh, people excited about being in it as well. Not just, not just, uh, there's some connection with the Andy Griffith show. That is, that is nice to see. Yeah. So, so how has the, uh, so you guys were going to be beginning the filming now, basically. This right. We were supposed to be shooting right now because the, the, Mayberry in the Midwest on. would normally have been uh, around this time. Right. And, um, you know, that got canceled, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, so, you know, we, we were disappointed. But at the same time, we think it gave us a lot of advantages really gives us more time to prepare because uh, in, in the film production business um, there's, you know, you got time, money and quality. And we always tell people pick two. If you want it fast, then you, it's going to be expensive if you want it good, you know, that sort of thing. So now we have, we, we don't have the money. So now we've got time and that will help us maintain the quality. Um, 
I think we've combined all the shooting now or, uh, in, in September. So we'll shoot in Danville still. Uh, was the town still on board with having us shoot there, even though there's no f- official festival. Um, so we'll shoot there in Danville for a couple of weeks. Then we move to Mount Airy uh, during Mayberry Days to finish up. And um, I think it's going to work out better for the project because having that big gap in the schedule, I think, made me nervous because uh, things change. People, you know, people kind of forget what they were doing. Character, you know, suddenly you have scenes that were shot, you know, four months later, and it's like the character may not even feel the same, yeah. you know. My so I think it's better for the film. What's that? I said my hair may get more gray in that time period. Right. Who knows? <laughs> you know, it could be a tough four months for you. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but um, so I think it's going to make the movie better. Actually, uh, it's unfortunate because it'll be more difficult. I think for people who are already planning to attend that festival. Uh, so what we've done is we've scheduled most of our festival scenes that we're shooting over Labor Day weekend. So we're hoping that'll allow people the flexibility to still come and participate, and um, trying to to put together some some additional festival type programming for folks. Uh, so that, you know, if you come and you're not involved behind the scenes or whatever, um, uh, you have some things to do. And so we're talking to, to the organizers in Danville about just trying to make it a sort of a mini festival. I don't want to make any promises. Obviously, we have to focus on making a film. But uh, I think there's an opportunity there to, you know, people are going to be looking to get out and do stuff. And uh, if we can kind of create a little Mayberry in September in the Midwest, uh, We'll we'll do our give it our best shot. That'll be great. And then I know they're going to be over in Mount Airy. That, of course, Mayberry Days. So there'll be stuff going on there as well. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking forward to it because there's been so many things have been canceled this year that were Mayberry related, and this was the 60th anniversary year for the Andy Griffith Show. So uh, we're really looking forward to having more Mayberry things that we can do. Now, one of the other things you had mentioned uh, earlier was behind the scenes type thing that you're going to try. Right. So, so part of, uh, you know, this project, this uh, community project uh, that this is, is we really want to involve people behind the scenes, you know, make you feel part of the process. And so uh, this week we're going to be launching our uh, first installment of, uh, let me get my prop here, our Mayberry man behind the scenes. And, um, you know, what we're going to do is take you behind the scenes on a particular aspect of the film. Or, or So our first episode will be with Ronnie Shell. So we're going to do a little interview with Ronnie Shell and have him talk about comedic acting. So we've got a lot of people that, that contributed and are going to have speaking roles. And they're going to, well, you might want to watch this because you're going to be acting in this movie. Um, and have him talk about what's, you know, what is it like to be an actor in a comedy setting? Like he's done a lot of stand-up, right? You tell jokes, you get laughs. That's we've all kind of done that. We, are, but what happens when you're on the set with other people, and other people have scripted lines, and how does that work right. for a first-time actor? So hopefully, get some insights from him, and you know he's always good for some stories, and, um, and we'll probably show some clips from the Andy Griffith Show, and and because he, I think what's interesting about his two roles on the Andy Griffith Show is in one he was kind of uh, he played the director, you know, in, uh, when Aunt B did the commercial, right? And he was kind of a straight man in that episode. But in the other episode where he played the furrier, he was sort of the comic relief in that scene. So I'd just like to have him comment on some of those things and give some insights for if, if you happen to find yourself on the set of our film, I think uh, maybe these tips might come in handy. And we'll do, uh, we'll go into t- uh, a different, uh, different installment. We'll talk about storyboarding. So we're in the process of storyboarding out some of the scenes. That's where you kind of draw what the camera's going to see. And Stark's background, he's been a professional storyboard artist for 30 years. And so that's part of our process and planning out the production. So we'll do an installment where we kind of look at some of the storyboards and, you know, tell people what that's about. If you're going to be an extra on the movie, which a lot of people are, um, uh, we're going to do a little, uh, what is it like to be an extra? What do you do? What, what's the terminology you need to know? What do you, when they say back to one, what does that mean? Do you know what back to one means? No. I assume oh, it's back yeah. to that's, that's like one of the most important things you need to know because uh, that means go back to the first position. Right. Yeah. Like, so we're going to run the scene again 
So if you're an extra and you've been walking down the street, you got to go back to where you start. So little things like that that kind of start to educate people and what it's like to participate in the film. Um, we did a lot of location scouting already. We want to share some of those pictures and videos and talk about that. Um, we'll do a, an installment uh, about the music that I mentioned. Uh, I don't know if we'll have Laura on that or not, but um, talk about how we plan to integrate the Andy Griffith Show music because you really can't just take those songs from the 60s mm -hmm. and drop them into a modern movie. They'll stick out like a sore thumb. So, but, but we want to use those tunes and those melodies and weave them into the film and we'll, we'll share some of how we're going to do that too. So lots of fun behind the scenes stuff and we're going to try to keep it regular, uh, come out with weekly installments and um, we'll send those. If you're on our list, our email list, which you can sign up for at mayberryman.com. We'll certainly push it out to that list. Uh, we'll post it on our Facebook uh, page and our Facebook group for backers. Uh, we're gonna put it out to everyone for a while and eventually we'll probably just be providing it to our backers just uh, as we shift into more heavy production mode. There's only so much we can- So many so many hours a day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. So that'll be nice because uh, the people who have been involved or, or in some way helped raise money or whatever they might have done to be a part of the, the Mayberry Man uh, movie itself, they'll be able to see those. Plus, hopefully that'll allow at least the ones you release publicly would allow uh, people to maybe get a little bit fired up about wanting to see this thing. And uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, and also, um, you know, we're, we're, we have a few more opportunities, some roles that were created uh, for for contributors that um, we still need to fill. So there's opportunities there. We, we really can't aff afford to go out and hire professional actors for these bit parts. So um, we're going to give people some opportunity. If they still want to get involved, um, they can claim those spots as well. Well, that'd be great. So we'll have that information. We'll put it in our show notes. If you give it when we, when you have it, we'll put it in there. Yeah. And we'll spread it around as well. So uh, you've got a few places where they can catch up with you. And one of them is uh, MayberryMan.com. Is that right? Yeah, MayberryMan.com is uh, the, the website's in, in need of a little bit of an overhaul. But, uh, you know, we've had to peel away information that's no longer applicable. But that's sort of the good starting point because it'll allow you to sign up for the email list. And um, Facebook, you know, we have a pretty solid presence on Facebook and try to make sure we always post things there. Um, and you can always just, uh, you know, reach out to us and through any of those, those platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we want to encourage anybody that even if you've signed up and you are a contributor, you might want to go back over and just make sure you're signed up for everything. You can go back over to Mayberry man. Can you get to it from there? I suppose the, uh, yeah. the sign yeah. up and cause uh, that's a, and uh, that's definitely one of the things I know that uh, we deal with with the Rewind Watchers Club, uh, trying to make sure people get the e bullet, the newsletter. It's a difficult thing to get email delivered to people. Uh, it just seems to bounce a lot, and so people don't get it. So, yeah, we have you know, we have a lot of people on our email list, and then we have you know over eight hundred backers, and so that's just a lot of data to manage when we don't have a team that really does that. It's yep. kind of me doing it. Say the team is you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we try to use the tools that we have available and we've gotten some help from some, some of our sort of super fan participants and uh, we try to put people to work, but it's hard to say, you know, go clean this list. I don't think that is a skill set <laughs> that most people have. It is not. No, it is not. <laughs> I have done that. So I understand what's required. Yeah. Well, is there anything else in particular you need to get out to the fans as we wrap up here? No, we just appreciate the patience uh, on everybody, especially with the delay in the starter production. But as when we put our announcement out, I, I think I included uh, my comments that I don't think this really delays the movie much at all. I mean, had we been shooting now, we would have been able to get started on, on editing, but we couldn't finish the film until we finished shooting in September. So uh, I feel like we're still on track uh, for delivering the movie when we always hope to deliver it. So, which would be in 2021 and I'm um, not going to you know, commit to any specific date, but um, <laughs> I understand. we're going to get it out, you know, and uh, make sure it's good. But we're, we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. We're putting team, you know, key team members in place, our director of photography, our unit production manager. She's the one that manages 
the crew, you know, like the hiring and paperwork and all that stuff. Um, you know, we're talking to an assistant director this week, you know, that's a very important role. Um, you know, we're continuing to do casting and, um, it will be, yeah, it's just, uh, it's moving along. Uh, well, we appreciate all the hard work you guys have been doing. I know this is hard. We're excited. I'm excited still. I want to see what this is going to be like when it's finished. Uh, of course, selfishly, I'm excited because I'm going to get to be a part of it. And I've never done anything like that. So it's going to be, I'm sure I'll get yelled at a lot because I'm not doing something right. I don't know. You may never do it again. <laughs> I may never, I'll probably never do it again. <laughs> I may get replaced. Well, you're going to have to be in the sequel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The sequel. So uh, anyway, we really do appreciate you taking time to stop and visit with us for a little while. And just give us an update about where, you know, things were delayed and what's going on. And uh, just keep the fans and all those that did support uh, Mayberry Man or have supported just to keep them informed as well. So this is a good way. To get well, we, we really do appreciate everyone, you know, uh, putting their faith in us and the project and, uh, you know, financially putting it out there. And then, uh, you know, it, financially it's become, things have become harder for a lot of people. So, um, you know, fortunately no one's asked for their money back because, <laughs> right. um, because it's all earmarked for something and then some, but uh, we want this to be a great project. We think this is something that people need, especially the Mayberry community. We want to create something that's, uh, you know, that's just right for the times. And, um, you know, we want to involve the existing stars that, you know, they're not going to be around forever. So we want to do this now and get it, get it done and get it done right. And we just appreciate everyone uh, backing us and the patience uh, to, you know, give us the time to get it done. Well, Court, thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, we'll, we'll keep up with you as we go throughout this. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing the behind the scenes uh, episodes. No, what are we calling them? Behind the scenes uh, posts. <laughs> I'm just Different calling ones. them installments at the installments. moment. Installments. Yeah, we, we don't want to say show because that's, that's too much pressure. <laughs> it's too much pressure on my brother. Yeah. That's right. So thank you again for being here and thanks Stark for us as well. And Greg, everybody involved. So thank you for being here. You bet. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was, uh, that was our interview with, uh, court Hal. uh, you had several tidbits in there about, uh, just growing up in the, uh, I guess in the Mayberry world. And, uh, so I, ho I hope you enjoyed that. Plus you get to hear a little bit about, uh, the uh, Mayberry Man movie as well. So I hope you really enjoyed that. Uh, now we're fixing to hear from Randy Turner or this week in Mayberry history. And uh, I thought it was also interesting uh, what Stark was talking about, uh, the behind the scenes type stuff that you're going to be able to hear uh, as part of that uh, ongoing series that he's going to do. And uh, if, <laughs> there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on that uh, if you watch the video version of the show, sometimes you see me doing things before the show or after the show. And if you were watching this episode, you just saw me get ready for Randy Turner's section because I had not loaded it yet. <laughs> so let's go and hear from Randy Turner for this week in Mayberry history. Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. I originally discussed the introduction of the musical Mountain Family, The Darlings, and The Darlings are coming on March the 18th, 1963, in the Two Chairs, No Waiting podcast number 573. In the 12 months following that report, I'm also featuring reports on each of the four band members. Check out podcast episode 574 in the archives to hear about mandolin player Dean Webb. Rodney Dillard was born in East St. Louis, Illinois on May the 18th, 1942, though he was raised in Salem, Missouri, 125 miles to the southwest. Some of his earliest memories involve music, recalling that his mother played the guitar and his dad the fiddle for as long as he can remember. 
As Rodney and his older brother Doug demonstrated to their parents they were serious about learning the guitar and banjo respectively, they were rewarded with their own instruments. Rodney's parents worked in East St. Louis, so he and Doug were raised by an aunt during the week and by their parents on the weekends when they returned home. The Dillard family often entertained at get-togethers and church socials, but were never able to do more than that due to work being more than 125 miles away on Route 66, which was a simple two-lane road at the time. Rodney dedicated himself to mastering the guitar in high school and performed with various bluegrass bands, though his musical tastes were always broad and in no way limited to bluegrass. These band performances meant he sometimes had to sneak into the venue as the shows were in often seedy bars and he was still underage. In 1958, Rodney joined Joe Knowles' Dixie Ramblers, a band that not only included his brother Doug, who had joined earlier that year, but also a young John Hartford, which resulted in a lifelong friendship with the wonderful performer who would eventually write the classic song, Gentle on My Mind. When Rodney graduated from high school, he enrolled in Missouri Southern State University in Joplin, but quickly realized his future lay in music and dropped out before his first final exams. He and Doug eventually joined with Dean Webb and Mitch Jane to form the Dillards. After an arduous trip cross-country to reach Los Angeles, they were seen performing in a club by a talent scout and were signed to Electra Records. The small blurb about their good fortune was printed in Variety, which led to Andy Griffith's manager, Dick Link, arranging for them to audition for the roles of the Darling Boys. The rest is history. The Dillard's career was boosted by the exposure they had as a result of playing the Darling Boys. While Rodney always loved bluegrass, as stated earlier, his musical tastes were broader. This was undoubtedly one of the reasons the band was more progressive than other bluegrass bands. By the mid-1960s, they were not playing the folk circuit, but were instead playing the rock and roll circuit, alongside bands such as the Birds. As the band continued to evolve, they were among the first to electrify their instruments and add drums to the mix. Purists may have balked, but their innovations were an important part of what came to be called new grass. They were important influences on bands such as the aforementioned The Birds, as well as The Eagles, and thus the Dillards were instrumental in the formation of country rock. Doug left the Dillards in the late 1960s, but the band continued with a new banjo player, and in fact has had numerous members throughout the years. Rodney explained his brother's departure by saying, There is no banjo player in the world better than Douglas. The problem was that I could not live, breathe, and sleep bluegrass. In 1970, the Dillards were playing the Troubadour Club in Los Angeles when a young British musician preparing to make his American debut saw their show. The young musician was Elton John, and he soon asked them to open for him on part of his tour. That same year, the Dillards recorded a version of Wild World, written by Cat Stevens, which was supposed to be released first. But when Cat's record label believed the song would be a hit for the Dillards, they went ahead and released Cat Stevens' own version. As Rodney said, that's the business for you. Rodney remains an active performer and is a frequent guest at Mayberry events and festivals. But that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to watch out for one another, stay well, and take Andy's advice, and act like somebody. Hey, thank you, uh, Randy. We appreciate that. And wow, great report on Rodney Dillard. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on anything that Randy's doing on the internet and otherwise, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com turnersgrade at gmail.com and he'll make sure you don't miss out on any of the fun stuff that he's doing he's got so much going on turnersgrade at gmail.com 
Folks, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the report from Court and also the great report from Randy. Uh, if, I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, I, I want to see this new show that they're going to be having, the behind the scenes. I'm sorry, not show, installment. <laughs> Because the the actual thing there, if you say you're going to put out a show, you know there's that's that's pressure. You need something done. So I completely understood uh, Stark and Court saying, "No, it's not a show. It's installments. We're going to do installments." So if they're going to give us some kind of acting classes, that's going to be absolutely amazing. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. So, uh, folks, uh, that'll just be some more Mayberry for us. Uh, things that are related to that. Uh, somebody had asked in our chat room about how to support the uh the movie if you haven't done it you can you can send them an email at sponsors at mayberryman.com and they they'll get back with you if there's uh, things that are available sponsor it's just singular sponsor at mayberryman.com and the link is on their website mayberryman.com so go check that out uh we had somebody from the podcast uh, chat room uh, andy actually said that they should call it a stark contrast <laughs> Stark, see that's that's clever. Yeah, see that's Stark Howell, and they're gonna do behind the scenes. His Stark contrast. Oh, he did you hear that on TV, <laughs> <laughs> folks? I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a good time here in Mayberry with me, and thank you for being here with me. I would love to hear from you guys. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com or just drop by two chairs, no waiting.com. Uh, leave me a message. However you'd like to be in contact with me, I love to hear back from you. Our chat room was cooking tonight, 40 some odd people in there. I invite you on Monday nights at eight o'clock Eastern time. I'm trying to get this right. Eight o'clock Eastern because it's seven o'clock Central. Come in and join us for the live recording of the show, and you can be a part of our chat room and join in the other 40 or so people that are in the chat room visiting and talking away. And you can have some more Mayberry fun, folks. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time right here on Two Chairs. <laughs>